are live except no we are not live because this is a recorded video y'all are gonna see this like at least 12 hours maybe more like 16 after it's been recorded because right now it is currently 10.07 p.m. Eastern time here. But as you all know, I am Chimoge and this is Chimoge's comments. Welcome to another commentary action right here on site in the commentary action closet, the best closet in the world. Um, we've improved our lighting in the closet a little bit because I figured out a while ago I could place my phone in a certain place, you know, get creative. So I think the lighting is a little better than before. Um, please tell me in the comments whether or not the lighting is better. Um, but anyway, oops, something fell. All right. But yeah. Um, and I have also got a ruler to use to point while I'm talking. It's kind of a broken ruler. Um, don't, don't even remember how long I've had this ruler. Um, at least since middle school, I'm 24 now, so this is at least a 10 year old ruler. Maybe I even had it since elementary school. That could be a 15. Could this be a 20 year old ruler? Nah, I would have been in preschool. I don't think this ruler is that old. This is an old ruler. Um, tell me in the comments if whether or not you're older than my ruler. I think some of you might not be older than this ruler. But anyway, this is an iconic day, um, so please, like and subscribe or follow on whatever platform you see this on because um this video as always is gonna go on out on a bunch of platforms so whatever platform you're watching this on please either like it or subscribe and follow um depending on what the platform calls you know their actions so please do that second thing i want to mention don't think i've mentioned the video before before i get started just want to mention that um, you should please, please, please join the Patreon for Chimoge's comments. Um, the link to the Patreon will be in the description of the video, but on Patreon, um, for a little bit extra money, you will be able to get, um, you know, some extra perks, some, you know, exclusive content in the, in the future, um, some early content merch, you know, shirts and things, you'll be able to get that. So please, if you're interested in all that, and I know you're interested in that because you're very smart if you're watching this video, please go join my Patreon. And then third, also, um, donate. The link to donate will be in the description as always, but please cash up, Venmo, um, PayPal, whatever, um, you know, direct from the credit card, um, and we'll have more methods coming up. Please also donate because um, your cash, um, you know, helps keep me afloat so that I can do this without having to go off and, um, you know, work at McDonald's or something to, to pay the rent. So, yeah. Anyway, now on to the video itself. To, so, to, today, started a bit, today, the video I'm going to be talking about is from ABC News. This is the video I'm going to be commentary reacting to. And it's called 100 Days of Russia's Invasion of Ukraine. So that's right. I'm going to be talking about the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Now, for those of you who don't know, I think most of you know, because the news has been shoved down our throats, you know, like we're, we're some sort of naughty toddler and, you know, some vegetables our, our mom's giving us to, to eat, right? But anyway, like that Russia-Ukraine news has been shoved down our throats, so I'm sure, sure you've all heard of it. But basically, Russia and Ukraine are fighting a, a war, and it's supposed to be the end of the world. Um, it's terrible. People are dying. It's very bad. But, um, you know, the, the I guess the mainstream narrative on this war is, is not quite accurate. Um, so we'll be getting into that. This is a short cl clip. But as usual, um, I have a lot to say, even about short things. It's very dense. But um, just to give some background, I think is relevant um, before going into this video. Essentially, if you didn't know, Russians and Ukrainians are both white groups. These are white people. And what are white people? White people are a group of nomads, essentially, right? They, they've been in existence um at most like 65,000 years, right, when, way back when, some Africans, um, you know, had a little lovey time with some Neanderthals and, you know, created some pale, pointy-nosed people, right? 
those pale pointy nose people wasn't anything inherently wrong with them um they had some proclivities right um i, I think my, my personal theory is they're a little bit more prone to violence naturally than most other groups and that's not necessarily bad sometimes violence is necessary right but unfortunately they became nomads what is a nomad someone who's wandering from place to place long term and long story short i'll cover this in detail in the lecture but essentially being a nomad makes you more violent because you don't know who to trust you get paranoid and then you just start killing everyone because you think oh you know i have to kill them before they kill me you go crazy so long story short they did that for a long time they became very irrationally violent last couple thousand years white people have settled some places but those tens of thousands of years of violence took a, a bad toll on them so now they just start start fights when it doesn't make sense and Russia Ukraine is is another instance of that these these fools are fighting and it doesn't even make sense I mean this this you know it's completely avoidable they'll talk like it makes sense it doesn't anyone with with sense who values human life when the start of this war the Western media will have you believe that Ukraine is somehow morally better than Russia because um, as I'll be talking more about more of Ukraine is really just a proxy for um, Western Europe or Western Europeans which are really led by the United States of America because the people who run the United States of America are just Western Europeans who came to what we now call North America and North America and uh, just uh, you know killed a bunch of people and set up their home right so basically they 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 just exported Western Europe abroad and they've been doing that, that crazy thing for the last uh, few hundred years but anyway long story short the war between russia and ukraine is really a war between the americans and russia it's just the americans are using ukraine to fight for them because that way it's a little less explosive um but it's still pretty explosive as you can see from you know images of bombs and things like that i'm sure you've seen on your tv but anyway they'll have you believe that the ukrainians are better than the russians they're not um i haven't seen any russian propaganda because i'm here in the u.s and um you know, Russian propaganda doesn't have as much reach, but I'm sure the Russians are saying that, you know, they're way better than Ukrainians, they're Jesus, Ukraine is devil, America's devil. I'm sure that's what they're saying. Um, if anyone's in Russia, are there any black people out there in Russia, if there are, good luck to you. That's a rough environment. Are there any non-blacks in Russia? Are there non-blacks watching my channel? Shout out to, I, I know there probably are. Shout out to, um, you know, our Eurasian followers, you know, I'll take a follow from anyone, um, a view from anyone. Um, welcome. You know, we, we have our political differences, but, you know, if you're putting money in my pocket um, in such a way that, you know, you don't control me, I thank you. Um, but anyway, um, if anyone's been seeing Russian propaganda, um, tell me in the comments if they, they've been saying what I think they've been saying. But uh, if they are saying that, which I suspect they are, they're also wrong. They're no better than Ukraine. This Russia-Ukraine thing, Russia versus U.S. thing by the back door, this is really no different than when you have have two unruly boys walking down a high school hallway and they bump into each other. Instead of walking past each other, they, they proceed to punch each other in the face and, you know, just spill blood for no reason. That's what this is. Or another way of saying it, it's like when two gangs are fighting. You got the Russian gang, you got the Ukraine gang, which is teamed up with the America gang. They're both bad guys, you know, so shouldn't shouldn't really be taken too much of a side. Just hope you don't get hit by a stray. But anyway, that, that's the background to this thing. Um, let's see what ABC News had to say about this, and then you can see and hear what I had to say about what they had to say. All right, let's go. Russian President Vladimir Putin's troops invaded the country and heavy fighting continues there as President oh. Zelensky estimates that 20% of Ukraine is now... Oh, my bad, my bad. I think I had it on, um, yeah, I had the playback speed way too fast. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on today. Whenever I, I hit the, um, you know, YouTube, my, my picture fades away. I don't know what's going on. Sorry about that. Well, uh, I'll rectify that in the future. Um, anyway, let's watch. 
hundredth day since Russian President Vladimir Putin's troops invaded the country and heavy fighting continues there as President Zelensky estimates that 20 percent of Ukraine is now under Russian control. ABC News' Britt Klenet joins me now live from Kiev, Ukraine for more on this. So, Britt, uh, you were here. All right. So first place I want to pause. So um, I just want to say when he mentioned that 20 percent of Ukraine allegedly is now under Russian control. Um, it's important to um, keep in mind the geography of Ukraine and the ethnic um, demographics in the different parts of the country. So if you don't know, um, now that I think about it, it would have been good if I had a map, but um, y'all can, you know, if you're watching this on one device, get on another device, look up a map, right? You can see a map of Eastern Europe, find Russia and Ukraine. But anyway, um, you have Russia, right? And then to the west of Russia is Ukraine on the border, right? So then Russia is east of Ukraine. So on the eastern part of Ukraine, you have a lot of ethnic Russians, right? Because um, Ukrainians and Russians are um, very genetically related because they're both white and also both mostly of Slavic origin. Um, but they're different groups. And the history is actually interesting because um, Russians, ethnic Russians, are actually Nordics, right? People from Scandinavia who migrated down as Vikings, invaded the local Slavic population and mixed in with them, right? So a Russian is a mixed race or mixed tribe because, again, these are just white tribes. You know, white people try and act like they don't have tribes, that's bullshit. Everyone has tribes, and this is just more tribal warfare. You know, they're, they're no different than anyone else in that in that regard. I'm um, just more violent. Um, but anyway, right? So a Russian is someone who is of mixed tribal ancestry between, um, I guess, Scandinavian um, tribe and Slavic tribe. Ukrainians are just another tribe of Slavs, right? Pure Slavs. Um, so to speak, um, I don't know if I should put that in quotes. I think they are pure Slav, right? I don't, I don't think they, um, well, I, I know people debate about, um, whether or not Slav is technically, um, from a genetic standpoint, one tribe, like whether or not they have all one unique common ancestry. I think they do based off of research and intuition, but, um, could be wrong. Tell me in the comments if what you guys know about that but anyway point is ukrainians are a, a tribe of slavs right russians are a, a tribe of mixed nordic and slavic ancestry right and because these people have been next to each other for a long time and they've been fighting they hate each other but anyway their eastern ukraine is made up mostly of ethnic russians right i think some of that um you know, they've just been there since Russians have come into existence. But a lot of that also was because during the Soviet Union, a lot of Russians, ethnic Russians, moved into Ukraine to colonize it. And they're more in the eastern part, right? Um, and then if you go west of a certain point, it's more totally Ukrainian. So why is this important? Because that 20% of Ukraine that is now under Russian control, that'll be in the east, really right so in a way this is kind of part of i mean russia wants to rule the entire world um but they especially want to rule places where ethnic russians predominate so that's part of what this strategy is um just so you know during ukraine's media is calling today's milestone 100 days of fortitude and certainly the way ukrainians in the armed forces and, and, and civilian life stood up and met this challenge, has amazed the world. What can you tell us about what this day means there? Well, this is a somber milestone, Terry. President Zelensky, in one of his defiant video addresses, marked 100 days by praising the resistance, saying that victory will be ours. But we heard from NATO, uh, the head of NATO, uh, saying that this will be a prolonged war, that this could be a war of attrition. And again, 100 days, Terry, with no end in sight. This is 100 days of needless death, of needless destruction, of needless heartache. Okay.
And I agree with her. This is a hundred days of needless death, needless destruction, needless heartache. Just like basically every war that white people start. There's no point. Um, but um, one thing to note there is as she is reported, NATO is saying that, and of course, NATO is basically America and that they're lackeys. That, that's what NATO is. North Atlantic Treaty Organization really should change the name to America and their lackeys because America runs that joint. That, that's what that is. Um, but anyway, America and their lackeys, a.k.a. NATO, um, well, America and their white lackeys, right? Because um, America and their lackeys, they have some other organizations for people who aren't white. But anyway, America and their white lackeys, um, which is NATO, um, are saying that they think this could be a war of attrition, um, even though I believe she said Russia is, is saying they think they have the upper hand. Um, but this is interesting because most of the reports I've seen um, from Western media um, have been indicating that, um, you know, Russia and Vladimir Putin, Russia's leader, is, um, you know, not doing well in the war and that they're in a state of internal disarray because they're unhappy with how the war is being carried out. Um, when I read those reports, I was somewhat skeptical of that, that it had, was going that badly for Russia. And the NATO report would seem to confirm that. Perhaps the Russians are unhappy with how it's going, but it seems to me that that they're not on the whole that much less unhappy than um the americans are unhappy because it seems like um at this point it's kind of a as they're saying a stalemate it's going to take a long time um and that does not bode well um and then as for why the war is needless um because i've touched on that a couple times but i think i should elaborate why is the war needless well because when you look at it, right, the United States is um, the most powerful country in the world, one of the richest in the world per capita, um, and the richest gross, right? Russia, even though they're poorer than the U.S., and, um, you know, Western Europeans make fun of them and other Eastern Europeans for being poor, they're still richer than most countries on the earth. They're, they're not starving over there. Um, you know, and Ukraine is kind of in a similar position to Russia. They've gotten up under the U.S. because they want to fight off Russia. But, you know, I mean, Ukraine is doing better than most countries on Earth. Like, almost all white countries are doing better than most countries on Earth. They're, they're people, they have hardships, but they're not like, you know, literally on death's door, you know. So, um... You know, I just say all that to say, if you're in that position, obviously you want to improve yourself, but do you need to kill people over that? You know, and I know some of you might think my perspective is oversimplistic because you're used to these white talking heads talking about how, oh, we have to dominate, we have to, all this nervous nomadic energy, and it's just like, no, that's crazy. Like, you know, there's just some stuff you don't need to kill for. You know, who, who cares who rules the world? What? What? This, this rule the world shit, this is just some cartoonish Disney villain nonsense. Like, wh why, why do you want to control other people so bad? You know, so, and you're going to kill for that? What, what do you want to tell them to do anyway? If you, if you have everything you need to survive, it's needless, right? But it's hard for us to see that a lot of times because this crazy violent mentality through things like the Western media, has been so deeply ingrained in us, we just think it's normal to just want to go kill other people because we currently don't have the power to tell them what to do. Or because, you know, we, we want their resources, even though we have enough resources. Instead of trying to trade with them, you want to shoot them? It's crazy. It's crazy shit. So, um, yeah, but anyway, let, let me let them talk some more. And Britain, we're learning more, I guess, about electronic warfare. Obviously, it's a crucial part of 21st and 20th century warfare, for all that matters. Uh, how this type of technology is shaping the war in Ukraine. What can you tell us about that? 
Well, broadly speaking, this includes defeating drones. This means intercepting GPS signals. It could mean uh, jamming um, radio or, or mobile communications. It could mean eavesdropping on communications. And going into this war, and this is interesting, that uh, the perception was that the Russian forces, that Russia had a huge advantage in electronic warfare. But when Russia failed to capture this capital, uh, Kiev, that it kind of changed that perception and, and that it thought that perhaps um, the, these critical um, electronic um, communications weren't as advanced as initially thought. Hmm. And the Ukrainians certainly had upped their game in that regard under U.S. tutelage really since, since 2014. So the U.S. now training Ukrainians uh, how to use those uh, uh, HIMARS artillery systems in an undisclosed location outside of the country. Those are those long-range, very precise rocket artillery. Uh, how is that? Okay, I'm going to pause it here. So two things. So obviously they're talking about technology here, right? So the first thing, the first big takeaway I think we should get from the technology section is that whenever white people fight, they develop technology they're going to use to kill non-whites, okay? So, because again, both of these countries, both of these factions, both of these gangs are imperial entities. They want to conquer the whole world. They together already rule the whole world. I mean, that, the white supremacy thing is mostly the Western Europeans, but Eastern Europe's in on that a bit too. And, you know, um, as Western Europe um, goes into infighting, right? Because for those of you who don't know, America's on the brink of civil war. So is the rest of Western Europe, kind of. Um, and as their, you know, global dominance loses, Eastern Europe, particularly Russia, really Russia, could step in to fill that void. So I say all that to say, anyone who's not white and has racial consciousness, especially us Africans, right, have to be wary of these two groups, because these are people we're probably, we have a high likelihood of having to fight in the near future, right? So what we have to keep in mind is that we have to look at the technology they're using against each other and think of countermeasures for it because they will likely use it on us. As they mentioned, Russia, um, it was thought before that Russia was advanced in a certain type of technology. I believe they said it was like electronic communications, but then they realized that they're not. Russia's going to be looking to develop that um, to get it up to par so that they're better than, you know, the Western European faction. The Western European faction is also going to be trying new things. So there's an arms race that's going to go on. It'll escalate. Um, and then whatever they come up with from that, um, I guess some positive silver lining is sometimes, you know, when they are coming up with technology to kill each other, they, they come up with technology that could be used in peace. You know, that that's how you get things like the Internet. That was... Um, invent, invented by the U.S. military, ironically, right? So um, sometimes there's silver lining to these people fighting, but again, it's not worth it overall. Um, but then there's going to be other dangerous stuff, stuff they, they're going to use to kill people. So that'll make their wars more deadly. But then they'll also make their wars against us more deadly. Um, so we, we have to watch that um, and develop strategies to counter that. Um, the second thing um, I want to note from that um, last seb segment I just let run on is them talking about the U.S. training Ukrainians, right? So Ukraine, um, for those of you who don't know, had actually is a hub of white nationalism, right? Um, so for those of you who don't know, there's a within white people, right? As you can already see from this video, there's a lot of infighting among them. So there's a tiny group of white people, namely the um, really the Puritans. It's one tribe of white people who live in the U.S., like New England. Um, shout out to people in New England. You know, went to school up there. I know people in New England. Um, kind of a terrible region because again, these Puritan types are real, real snobby, real racist. But um, and it's cold as fuck up there as well. But anyway. Um, those people, along with their, their allies in, you know, the upper crust of Western Europe, like, say, think like the British royal family, those types, right? They really control the whole globe. 
really because they like all white people have control of it but they really have control they're the top dogs and they they control all the other white people as well right so those are what is known as the the globalists you know it's commonly said that the uh, globalists the the white people that are are running the globalist faction belong to a certain group a group that i won't um i'm not gonna not name them uh you get um you can get uh if they see the sorry i'm just debating whether or not to name this group because often when you name this group your your content gets stricken down but i'm not even really going to be dissing them here so i'll i'll just say it i don't, I don't like censoring myself but anyway it is commonly said by many um term do I want to use? It is commonly said by many um, non-mainstream people that globalists, the globalist faction is controlled by European Jews, right? However, that is not true. Euro European Jewish people are um, very discriminated and oppressed within the larger white group and if you go into it, most of them, a lot of them, if not most of them, technically aren't even white. They're not pure white, right? So that that's just slander. The people who really control the globalist faction are like Puritans and mo most, at the very tippy top, the Puritans, and then also their allies among other tribes, related tribes in Western Europe, particularly like the British royal family, British lords, those people. Um, and, you know, certain other, you know, high class individuals in Western Europe, right? So that's who really controls that faction. But then you have other groups in lower tribe whites. And when I say lower tribe whites, those are the people who belong to the tribes of white people who are most, um, who are at least significantly oppressed within the larger group of white people. So that's most especially your Eastern Europeans, your Slavs. Then also you, you'll get like Irish in there, um, you know, um, certain Germans, um, you know, um, certain Italians, although the Southern, Ital Southern Italian, those people really aren't, aren't um, pure white, which is why they get um, trashed. So that, that's a little bit of a slightly different case but effectively they're in with them my point is those kinds of groups um lately have start i mean they've always been fighting them but more so lately than before have really been fighting the globalist factions so they're trying to fight form their own white nations that are independent of um the up higher tribe globalist white people so these are the white nationalists so why am I bringing this up? Ukraine, which again, even though they're in NATO, even though they're one of America's lackeys, they're still Eastern Europeans. So they became a hub of white nationalism because while they got under America to be free of Russia, who technically are another group of Western Europeans, right? Um, even though they, they have Slavic blood, the brains behind the Russian operation is ironically Western European, right? Um, you know, they're just a group of Western Europeans who is not liked by the rest of the Western Europeans, right? Probably in large part because, um, they have mixed ancestry. But anyway, right, these, um, the Ukrainians want to be free of the Western Europeans they got up under to free themselves from Russia. So because of that, they become a hub of white nationalism and white nationalists Lower tribe whites from all over the world have been flocking to Ukraine to get training on how to form their own independent white nations. So before this whole war, um, the Western media, which is, of course, controlled um, by that, um, you know, higher tribe Western European faction, um, was really sounding the alarm on Ukraine. And to be clear, I'm not a fan of white nationalism. You, you won't see me hanging around those people. I'm too black for that nonsense, you know. 
I think they have legitimate grievances against the other white people, but you know that they, they are also racist. They they want to kill everyone who's not white. They're, they're nuts. I don't, I don't like them. But so I'm not caping for them. But I'm just saying it is a fact that in that tribal war, that tribal disagreement they were having, the um, Western European media was criticizing them heavily until until this conflict with Russia began. And to be clear, the conflict with Russia began because, all right, I should note I misspoke earlier. Ukraine, even though they're in the NATO faction, they're not formally a part of NATO, right? Because they've been kind of, over the last couple decades since the fall of the Soviet Union, they've kind of been going back and forth, playing a middle game between Russia and Western Europe, right? But they, since the last, um, you know, change of power in their government, the revolutions they had in about 2015, I believe, they've been leaning more towards the West, right? And that made Russia upset. And they looked like they were about to formally join NATO. So that made Russia upset, which is why they invaded. And the U.S., who didn't want, you know, this potential full-time lackey going under the complete control of Russia got upset so they backed Ukraine to the tune of tens of billions of dollars so they're funding um, the Ukrainian military with tens of billions of dollars so that they have the resources they need to fight Russia but crucially the Ukrainian military is full of these white nationalists and it's very easy for the money that the US gave to the Ukrainian military to go to these white nationalist groups and individuals who are technically not part of the military. So what does that mean? The U.S. is under Joe Biden, the Democrat who is supposedly so anti-white nationalist, is ironically funding white nationalists in Ukraine, one of the global hubs of white nationalism to the tune of tens of billions of dollars. So when you're hearing about that training that the Ukrainians are getting, that could also become a problem for you when some of those white nationalists um, come back to the West. And I know a lot of us, like myself, are living in the West. Most, most black people aren't in the West. I know most non-Africans aren't in the West, but a lot of us are, and we're gonna have to fight those white nationalists when they come back with that U.S. aided Ukrainian training and knock on your door. All right. So this a lot of the stuff going on this conflict, even though it seems remote. And I know a lot of people have said, especially black people shouldn't, you know, focus on this conflict too much. And I understand where they're coming from, why they're saying that, because what they're really trying to say is don't pick a side. I agree. Don't pick a side. But watch and pay attention because this is important. Um. So yeah, um, let, let's keep watching. That system playing a role, could it play a role in this war, especially at battle out in the eastern part of the country, the Donbass, where, where Russia seems to just grindingly gain a little bit of ground every day? Absolutely, Terry. So for Ukrainians, these high, um, you know, more sophisticated uh, weapons can't come soon enough. They say this is exactly what they need to defend themselves. These are high miles. They are high, more, uh, more precise. They reach up to 50 miles. And they've come with a guarantee by the Ukrainians that they won't be used uh, to attack Russian territory. But as you say, they are now being trained. Um, the U.S. is now training the Ukrainians in these weapons. Uh, and they're at an undisclosed location, but we're not sure exactly when they will be used. We do know uh, that it takes around three weeks to train uh, these uh, these um, forces up to be able to use them. And as we know, it's a race against the clock now, especially with those gains that Russia is making in the east. Right, and the concern that at some point those gains might turn into a breakthrough, although Russia's had so much problem with maneuver warfare. Brit. And again, the Western media has been largely reporting that Russia's war effort is failing, this, that, and the third. But, um, you know, this video is on June 3rd. What, what's today? Today is the 7th, right? That was four days ago. As of four days ago, they're reporting that Russia is making gains in the East. So, you know, some of those Western media reports, I guess, are 
too optimistic from a Western perspective. It looks like Russia is not doing too bad in the war, so things are kind of hanging in the balance. Um, again, not that I'm picking one side, I'm just saying, like, um, you know, there's, um, you know, it, it looks like Russia is, um, you know, they're not rolling over in this war, so it could go on for a while. And Keith, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking right, out the ABC right. News. So it's over. Clip is over. Um, didn't actually point with the ruler that much. I pointed my hands, but I'm just going to use it to end this video. Um, so yeah, I think I said most of um, what I want to say. I think just to reiterate um, the big implications of um, the information presented in that video. One, one, the winner of this war, whether it be the Western European faction or the Russian faction, whichever one wins is likely going to be the group of white people we, as speaking as an African now, are going to have to fight the most in the future. And all you non-white, non-Africans as well, probably going to have to fight the most in the future. So you... Um, those of us who, you know, have to deal with that aggression, um, you know, have to watch this conflict closely so we know um, who we're likely going to have to fight and prepare for that reality. Um, second and related major takeaway is that the um, weaponry that is developed as a result of this conflict, as a result of the arms race going on within this conflict and even potentially after this conflict ends, um, is likely going to make war in general more deadly, unfortunately, just conflict in general more deadly and certainly our conflict with these Europeans um, more potentially deadly. So we got to develop countermeasures for that. And I think the third big takeaway is that... Um, the third big takeaway is that um, the white nationalists in Ukraine are receiving extra funding and training from the U.S. And that funding and training could then be unleashed on all the non-whites they come in contact with if you have to remove from the West um, and even, um, you know, potentially other places to, to obtain their objectives. So that's something also to keep an eye on. Um, and the fourth thing is that this Russia-Ukraine war could be going on for a while because, again, that report from ABC was only four days ago. Um, they're talking about a stalemate. mate. They're talking about a war of attrition. They're talking about Russia making gains in the East. So this could be going on for quite a while. You'll be hearing about it for quite a while. Um, and, yeah, you know, it... it we could have to wait a while before we know the full implications of the war. So watch this space. And again, I just want to reiterate, um, I don't think anyone should take a particular side in this war, contrary to what the media is saying. I know even, you know, I'm a big fan of soccer. Even these soccer games are clapping for all the Ukrainian players. They, you know, La Liga's putting stop invasion on their the fucking scoreboards, all this nonsense, like, I agree, stop invasion, but, um, you know, don't take a side, because they're both equally morally bad, right, Russia is just a bunch of genocidal, homicidal, um, you know, nomads who want to rule the world, and the Western Europeans are just a bunch of genocidal, homicidal nomads who want to rule the world, and Ukraine in particular, they're that. Um, and they're also, you know, white nationalists who are training white nationalists all over the world for conflicts that are, um, you know, they're going to unleash. And to be fair, it's not just them unleashing them. The Western European, um, you know, globally oriented faction um, is equally escalating that one. I'll go into detail on that in another video, but the point is these are all bad dudes. The only position really should be just stop the war because it's needless death. Um, and, you know, even though none of the white people dying in this war particularly care or have done anything positive towards um, 
you know, black people or any other group, still human beings, don't want to see him die, which is sad. So, um, yeah, only position I think people should take is just, just, just cut this out, stop it more, needless death. But anyway, thank you for watching. Again, whatever platform you're watching this on, please like and subscribe or follow. Um, please also join the Patreon and donate. Um, check the description for the links to that. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day.